Okay, uh, I will start. So uh, today I'm going to talk about Relute, uh, an alternative Haskell Prelude. And uh, before I move to the main topic of my talk, I would like to uh, tell a few words about myself. So currently I'm working as quantitative developer at the Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, in there we are using GHC Haskell to write our services. And before joining Standard Chattered, I was working as a Haskell developer in other companies. And previously, uh, I was a Haskell lecturer at the Edmore University in St. Petersburg. And uh, now in my free time, I'm doing open source work in Kovainik, where I develop and maintain uh, multiple Haskell libraries and applications. And Relute is one of those libraries. And today I'm going to talk about Relute. And uh, I want to also add a disclaimer that all, all views expressed in this talk are my own and not that of my employers. So I'm going to talk about Relute. And uh, in this talk, I will cover what is a standard library. And uh, in particular, I will describe the Haskell standard library called Bayes, its advantages and uh, pitfalls. And uh, I had experience in developing uh, alternative preludes in Haskell for many years. and. Uh, I'm going to talk about Relute, an alternative Prelude, its goals, its interface, how it helps to solve problems of base. And at the end, I will share how to use alternative Preludes, best practices and recommendations. So first, uh, what is a standard library? Standard library in computer programming is the library made available across implementations of a programming language. This is a definition taken from Wikipedia, but it doesn't give the full impression of what is a standard library. So uh, standard library, it actually should contain the default interface, default types and functions, which you are actually using by default. So when you have nothing, you are using types from the standard, from the standard library. And if you, if they're not enough, you need to use some other libraries to solve your problems. Standard library is also used by all developers. So since it's a standard language, all developers should be aware of it and, it's, and they're using the same by default. And usually standard libraries split into implicit and explicit scopes. So you have some types and functions which are available uh, to you out of the box. You don't need to do anything and uh, uh, for some other functions and types, you need to bring them into the scope by importing modules or uh, bringing new namespaces. And the standard library actually defines the language, the programming language, as much as syntax does. So because it's a language you are using uh, to write your programs, and which means that uh, it's something that everybody understands. And if it was different, for example, if all functions in Haskell were uh, named as operators, we have a completely different language now. So it's actually a pretty important part. And uh, the goals of the standard library is first of all, to provide essential utilities. These are the utilities to solve day-to-day -day programming, like common needs and solve basic problems. So if there are no essential utilities and if you uh, can't even build the small simple stuff, the standard library is no good. The standard library also should establish best practices. It should help developers to write better code. And also it should be an example of writing good code. So if you, you can learn from best from the standard library, how to write bad code, how to understand how the language works. And it's very important because again, since it's what you use the first thing, it's uh, better to start using the language in the right way. Uh, the standard library should be simple enough. It shouldn't be some complicated framework which you need to spend days to learn and understand. You, it's ideally should be easy to just start using the library straight away. And it should provide a nice user experience so you can write your programs faster. It also should be bug free because since it's used in each program, it will be a bit unfortunate if the standard library had some bugs, which means that each uh, program will have some bugs and which means that the standard library should be tested a lot and it's important to provide a robust interface. And also standard library should maintain backwards compatibility. Again, since it's used by each program, if you break something in your standard library, each program breaks. So you should think uh, really hard about uh, maintaining backwards compatibility and not breaking interface and not breaking other people's code. 
which makes the standard library like a special, more special library. It requires uh, more maintains and uh, more thinking. And an open question is, should uh, the standard library contain a solution to every problem like JSON parsing or logging or networking? Uh, because in some languages, standard libraries are big and include different utilities. For example, in Java, the standard library has some graphical or the stop application utilities in C++, they have regular expressions and efficient containers. In Haskell, we have concurrent channels and uh, convenient arbitrary precision integer arithmetic. It's, it's not an exhaustive list, but the, each uh, language defines by itself what it, need, what it wants to include in the standard library, what it wants to provide to its users. But at least, even if you don't provide everything, you should provide some essential and basic things. So let's talk about base. And base is the default Haskell standard library. Uh, first, a few words about base. Uh, base contains approximately 200 modules. It contains uh, 30,000 lines of pure Haskell code, not counting documentation and blank lines. And it has 28 versions on a package. And uh, base is usually released at the same time when a new JHC version re releases, which happens approximately two to three times per year. So you can see that the base is, uh, it existed for a very long time. It's a very mature standard library, so it has a long history. And it has a special module called Prelude. And Prelude is uh, just module in base, but it has a special role that all functions which are available to you implicitly by default are actually functions and types import exposed by the Prelude module. So if you don't write any imports, if you don't bring anything in scope, all you have is things are exposed by Prelude. This is this implicit scope of the base which are available to you without any problems. And uh, base actually have uh, a lot of good things. For example, it establishes common interface like type classes like functor or monad, data types like maybe or list and functions like filter and folder. So it's important to establish a common interface because the standard library is a language we use. If you see in code a function called filter or folder, you most likely know what the function is. Uh, what this function does. If, you, if somebody talks to you about functors, you know what does the functor mean. And uh, everyone can understand everyone. It's important to have a common interface and establish some common language. Also base, it improves over time despite breaking changes. It's also important because in some languages, a standard library wants to maintain infinite time backwards compatibility. So it means that there are no breaking changes allowed, for example, in Java, but in base, uh, things are changing, which is good. Uh, one of the example is a uh, uh, semigroup and monoid uh, change, where the, there were two type classes, semigroup and monoid, and semigroup became a superclass of monoid. And uh, if you haven't implemented this type class, your code will fail to compile, and you need to change. But uh, it was not an expected change. It was uh, discussed for a very long time. The compiler gave you a warning that if you implement monoid type class and you didn't implement semigroup, you will see that it will warn you that you will, your code will fail in the future. So it's actually very good to have improving the code base. And we, want, we don't want stale code, in the standard library. And the base actually contains enough for writing basic and small uh, programs. Uh, you can we can easily using to write using only base a tool like simple grep where you pass uh, name file pass and the name of the string and it will print you all the strings containing the string or like word or lines count it's sure uh, possible and which is nice you can start playing with your language immediately without uh, needing to do a lot of stuff but unfortunately base is not perfect it has some pitfalls and now I'm going to talk about problems with base. Uh, the first problem and the most popular problem is a string type. So the string type is defined in base as a list of characters. And um, this uh, definition of string has its own advantages, but it also has really severe drawbacks. For example, it provides poor error messages. So if you pass, uh, 
instead of string something like uh, maybe integer or some similar type, you will see error message mentioning some uh, character types which you haven't even worked with. But because of how types are working in Haskell, you will see re really confusing error message and it um, will confuse you for a long time. Or because of its type alias, you won't sometimes even see the string time mentioning in the error message compiler. So again, you will be a little bit confused and you will spend more time understanding what's happening when you have an error in your program. This is also the type is really slow. Uh, so the linked list is an excellent data structure, but it's not really suitable for representing string. For example, if string is a list of characters, because for strings, what you usually want to do, you want to take lengths of strings, you want to take characters by index, you want to append strings, you want to search in strings or take substrings. But a linked list doesn't provide these functions, doesn't provide fast versions of these functions. So if you use string, your code will be slow for main use cases of the string. And also, it might be very, very surprising, but the string uh, data type, uh, it uh, consumes really a lot of memory. It takes 40 bytes per character. And if you have simple English text with punctuation, it could be stored of, like of 1000 characters, it could be stored as 1000 bytes. But with string, you will have 40,000 bytes, which is uh, really terrible, but, uh, and makes code inefficient. So, the solution to this problem, if you want to avoid using strings and to use better string types, fortunately there are better string types in the Haskell ecosystems, uh, like text or byte string, they're provided in a corresponding package also called text and byte string. And so you, if you're aware of that string is not fast, you can just switch to other string types. The second problem with base are partial functions. So partial functions are functions that are defined only for a subset of their input. They don't handle all inputs. And the famous example is the head function. So the head function, it takes a list and returns you a first element uh, of the list. But the problem with this function, if you gave it uh, an empty list, you will get a runtime exception. But this function is pure. It uh, doesn't tell you anything about exemptions, and for, but if you pass the empty list, you will get an exemption. And this is uh, also terrible because the type of this function lies about its uh, implementation. It tells you that you always will have an element, but it's not true. And uh, it's a problem because the function is also is pure according to its type, but runtime exceptions in pure code are uh, not pleasant, it's not that easy to handle them. You need to wrap your code in more layers. And if you see them, you can see that there is no uh, much help in the error message. So I had a problem with uh, head a long time ago when I was teaching Haskell University. I wrote a small tool to uh, automate some teaching workflows. And I used the head function from Plut. And when I run the tool for the first time, I saw this error message, exception period had empty list. And uh, it was really confusing the way it's happening. I was checking the code for a very long time and it wasn't obvious why what's wrong. So it's not a good interface and you spend a lot of time. But if you haven't used this partial functions, you wouldn't have this problem in the first place. So the alternative is uh, for things that work, for functions that work with lists is to use something like uh, use non-empty data type is a type for non-empty list or pattern list explicitly. It may be more work, but in the end you will save your time. So it's uh, nice to always avoid partial functions. Sometimes it's not possible to avoid our partial functions. So there is no like a uh, silver bu bullet and it's okay. But if you can avoid, it's uh, always worth it to write a safer code. So another problem with base is that for a very huge uh, library, it has really low capability. So it contains approximately about 200 modules, but actually in practice, you don't use them all. You use about 40 modules and you may wonder what other models do. For example, uh, I would notice there is jc.conc.signal module and I have uh, uh, never used this module uh, before. And uh, it's really strange that there are a lot of modules that don't use in practice. So it, 
it's not like really pleasant. And it has a lot of modules, but it doesn't at the same time have a thing that uh, you will use uh, very often, uh, like containers, uh, dictionaries and sets, arrays, efficient string types, parsing utilities for general parsing or JSON, or binary parsing, common file system functions, like checking that the file exists, or time and day data types, and random utilities and many more. So for huge interface, it doesn't provide a lot of capability. And in fact, it's really suitable only for toy programs and experiments. You can't uh, write real life programs using only base. And uh, to solve this problem, you need to depend on external libraries. Fortunately, there are many of them, but using only base, you unfortunately can't write a lot of useful programs. Another problem with base is that it has some performance issues the only type for containers or for sequences is a list, which is uh, great, but it's not always suitable. It doesn't work for each use case. And uh, for this result, some functions are not fast if you use it only for list. And unfortunately, some functions even have space leaks in base functions like sum or product or left fold. Uh, and since there are no efficient data structures, there are no efficient algorithms for them. So sourcing for lists is fast, but uh, for other structures, it can be faster. And for other use cases, it also can be faster. And uh, it's also a problem see, because the code you write using base will be slow by default. So there are only small use cases where your code will be fast, but in most cases, your code will be really slow and you need to use again, external libraries from Hackage to write your code. But it would be nice if the data structure and functions were already performed by default. Another problem with base is that it has a really conservative refinement process. For example, it contains mostly add-only changes. So new data types are added, new functions are added, new modules are added, but things rarely are removed from base. If you walk through the change log, you will see that uh, sometimes modules are deprecated and are removed, but it happens uh, very rare. And this is a functions you most likely won't uh, even use in your code. So uh, the interface is becoming more bigger and bigger and it's harder and harder to use it. And for this reason, for example, the string data type is not going anywhere. The default string data type, which is essential for programming because strings are everywhere. But since a lot of code uses the string and it will break everything if you remove string, we will always have this default and efficient string type. And uh, also some foldable instances are confusing. So in some moment of time, foldable was introduced and later it was discovered that some instances, for example, the uh, foldable instance for pair, is confusing for beginners. When they try to do lens of a tuple, they see the number one, but when they expect number two. And um, this was a point for, for confusion for many people. But again, things are not going to, are not getting removed from base and we will have uh, this instance. And the number of modules is growing, but at the same, but uh, they're not moving into separate libraries. So if you don't use some things on daily basis, it probably may be a good idea to move into separate libraries so you can maintain this uh, code um, separately, but uh, it's not happening. And at the same time, really useful things like containers or text data types, they are not added to the standard library. So they are maintained uh, in the separate libraries and they will, uh, they're not going to be merged to this base. And if you want to change something a base, it's not a fast and easy process. Um, Exchange requires discussion by co-library committee and approval from this co-library committee, committee, which uh, makes the process of contributing to base slightly more heavyweight. And it's not easy to follow all changes and decisions in base because um, the discussion uses uh, uh, mailing lists. You need to subscribe to them. You can't uh, watch uh, interesting topics easily. And uh, because of this, again, you can't really see what's happening in the base, it requires to spend your time and effort. And um, I'm not saying that this is all really bad because a standard library shouldn't really 
remove uh, all things often because it will break the code too often. But all these things uh, combined, they make uh, the process of evolving base really slow. And the last thing uh, with base is that it's really tightly coupled with the JHC. If you use some JHC version, you will use specific version of base for this JHC. Uh, which means that you can't simply upgrade only compiler and not upgrade standard library. If you upgrade compiler, you also upgrade the version of base. So you, you can just use new features of JHC. You also need to migrate your code. And this is by itself not a problem, but since the base has also breaking changes, which means that your code breaks sometimes. So you need to upgrade it and to change to make it work with the new version of base. And this is a problem if you want to build your code against multiple JHC versions simultaneously. Each person that uh, writes Haskell library is familiar with this problem uh, because you usually want to support multiple JHC version. And uh, this means that at the same time, your, your library should be able to work with different APIs. And the solution, uh, the first solution is to use a C preprocessor, a CPP language extension in Haskell and write some ifs in your code, which basically describe what your code should be depending on the version of JHC or base. Or you can use some libraries like base compat, which contains the CPP inside and provide compatibility layer for you. But it's an external dependency. So uh, to summarize all things with base, uh, base standard library doesn't provide popular best practices. It requires knowledge of peculiarities to write safe code. And by default, it imposes inefficient types and uh, function, which means that it doesn't really reflect modern state of writing Haskell libraries and applications. When you write modern Haskell libraries and applications, you, res you use really small subset of base and uh, you don't use all of functionality. You mostly rely on external libraries, but it would be nice if, uh, all of the things will be included in base. And now uh, I'm going to talk about Relute and how Relute uh, solves all, all these problems and how it helps to write safe and more efficient Haskell code. So Relute is a safe, performant, user-friendly and lightweight Haskell standard library. It's an alternative standard library. And uh, some history behind Relute. Uh, it was created in July, 2018. The source code is in uh, Kovainik, and it's maintained by Kovainik creators, me and Veronica Ramashkina. And the uh, Relute is based on another alternative Prelude called Protolute, written by Steven Zill. And only on Hackage, uh, Relute is used by approximately 20 packages. But when you are using uh, alternative Preludes, you don't usually use them for libraries, you, write, you use them for applications. And you don't usually upload your applications to Hackage. Uh, so it mostly used in applications. But in addition, I want to add that Root also used in production applications in multiple of them, and it was used successfully. So it's really nice. It's a relatively mature standard library, so you can also use it in your code. And some of the Relute contains 2,500 lines of code and uh, contains even more lines of documentation across all 54 exposed modules. So we really care about providing best in class documentation. All of, we have 100% of documentation, 100% documentation coverage, and uh, uh, all uh, functions have examples. Uh, they have um, usages, they have explanations. If they have full exceptions, you will get this uh, in the documentation. So we really care about providing uh, the best user experience. and. Uh, uh, Relute is ma main motivation is uh, productivity. And the assumption here is that you can be more productive with a non-standard standard library. And uh, how Relute helps you to achieve higher productivity. First of all, it doesn't have partial functions. So if you, have if you don't have partial functions, you spend less time debugging your code. So which means you can write your code faster. Uh, it provides efficient defaults. If you don't have, uh, uh, if you have uh, efficient code, efficient functions, efficient types, you spend less time optimizing your code, which also allows you to write efficient software faster. Uh, in Relute, we have more things available. 
uh, by default. So you need to write fewer imports, which means that you need to write uh, less code to achieve the same result. You, you spend less time writing the code to achieve the same. And in Relute, we have better error, me error messages. So we are using the GHC feature called type errors to provide custom error messages. And I will give an example of the such error messages later in the talk. But this helps users of the standard library to discover problems faster. Not all error messages by GHC are readable enough and good. So where it's possible, we try to provide better error messages. And the root is also minimalistic, which means it depends on as low amount of external libraries as possible. Because nowadays in Haskell, when you want to build some library for the first time, you need to download it and build it locally. And if you have a lot of dependencies, you will spend a lot of time building your library. And your snapshots can change, your JC version can change, your index of uh, packages and hackers can change, and this will result in the same multiple rebuilds of the same library with different dependencies, and which, again, will result in you spending more time working. So we try to optimize dependencies. And uh, talking about main Relude goals, in its essence, Relute tries to be a better base. It basically tries to answer the question how a base would look like if we just uh, take all best practices and just put them in the standard library. So if you have better defaults and encourage uh, the ways how people actually write modern Haskell applications, how it could look like. And uh, also we want that, uh, that you should be able to start using Relute straight away. For this, we provide excellent documentation, and we have fewer custom things as, possi as possible. And we also rely on tooling assistance. We have our custom HLint rules, and I will also give an example of this later. So the idea is to uh, allow writing better Haskell code more productively, but, but not reinventing the wheel. And uh, there are also really anti goals. So we are not trying to rewrite base completely. So maybe some things are not person, and maybe if you rewrite everything from, from scratch, you can be in a better state. But nowadays we have base in Haskell, and it's not easy to just rewrite everything. If you uh, start uh, using Haskell, the base is, base is the first thing you face. And if you learn base, you don't really want to and learn everything and start using another thing just to be more productive. And also for this reason, we don't want to invent custom abstractions. You probably remember if you learned Haskell, how difficult it was to understand functors and monads. And uh, if uh, in standard library, we create new abstractions, we will spend even more time understanding them because abstractions are really hard. Uh, they require to think you to think really hard to master them and to understand and uh, introducing new abstractions will ha make the bar entrance barrier even higher and also for this reason we don't want to rename common definitions if you have some function in base you will also have the function with the same name and re in relude uh, like filter or folder uh, the base and haskell ecosystem already establishes common language and we don't want to change it and uh, to rewrite uh, everything from scratch. And we also don't want to choose among competitive libraries. So we don't bundle some lenses specific library or some specific login library or library for handling exceptions on networking library because um, different libraries have different use cases and they're not suitable for everyone. So you, if the library that we decide to put in our standard library doesn't fit your use case, it will mean that you need to uh, fight the standard library to hide this functionality and use your library. And you will end up with more libraries in your dependencies and building more code, but uh, which is not really convenient. At the same time, we want to give you flexibility to choose your solution. And Relute is perfectly compatible with other libraries. So we also don't break other code. So, and now let's talk about specific Relute features. Uh, there are many of them, and I can talk about Relute for hours, but I will highlight some of the features. And for example, that we don't have partial functions. I was, uh, I gave an example of a partial functions uh, previously, and uh, this was head. And uh, 
there are several ways you can solve this problem. The first so solution is to not introduce this function at all. So if you don't have any functions, you don't have partial functions as a consequence. Another solution is that this function, instead of returning always A, it also can return uh, an optional A. So it takes an ordinary list and returns maybe A. And the third solution, which we actually used and relude, is that require the argument of this function to uh, work with non-empty list. So if you have a non-empty list, you will always have an, uh, the first element of the list. And uh, we decided to go with this solution because uh, if you use maybe solution, uh, you will still need to pattern match on the result sometimes because if, even if you know that the list is not empty, it doesn't solve the problem uh, completely. And the type of the function that works with non-empty is more powerful than the function that works with non-empty because if you have a function that works with an empty list, you can easily implement the function that works with maybe. But if you have a function that works with maybe, you can't change anything to make it work with non-empty. So we just went for more powerful signature. And we changed some common uh, list functions like head, tail, init, and the last to work with non-empty. Another big change is that we made the text data type is default. So we are still experts in the string type. It's not gone because ecosystem uh, is still using it a lot of places and it's not uh, really a sane idea to remove string completely. But where it's possible, we try to provide better default. So all functions that work with string, they are now work with text. And um, if you want to use some text data type, it's easier with Relude to use better efficient uh, types. So text is uh, an array of UTF-16 encoded characters. It's uh, much more efficient than string and it's uh, a relatively good default. Uh, unfortunately, since it's not a native string type, it requires to uh, use you uh, an overloaded strings language extension, but uh, nowadays it's the most popular Husky language extension and which is not considered really controversial. So you can switch to better text types more easier. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a better error messages. For example, uh, we came up with this cute trick which allows allowed us to have simple type for function head. So head takes an empty list and returns the A. But at the same time, we provide uh, better error messages. So if you use head on ordinary lists, if you're not familiar with Relute or if you're just starting using it, you may accidentally use it on uh, empty list. You will have a nice beginner friendly error message, which you can see on the slide, which tells you that you was using it on the list, but you need to use, but it requires to work on empty and it provides some solution how you can uh, fix your problem. And this is nice because it allows you to migrate to Relute easier. And another thing is that we provide custom hlint rules so hlint is a Haskell tool which uh, suggests some code improvements and it has a feature that you can provide your own feature. You can ignore some of the rules from hlint if you don't like them or you can provide your own. And since we have uh, custom combinators, custom functions in Relute, we uh, provide our own hlint rules. And as far as I know, Relute is the only standard uh, alternative Relute which has custom hlint rules. And uh, when using uh, hlint, it has some advantages because it allows you to learn the standard library easier. If you're not familiar with all of the functions, you can see how they work and you can use the library more efficiently. It allows you to simplify your code by using standard and idiomatic utilities and you'll have more code guarantees that your code is safer. And uh, actually, the uh, hlint requires you to write all your uh, suggestions all your hints in a YAML file. And YAML file for Relute is 3000 lines of YAML code, which is not small amount of YAML. But we don't write this YAML by hand. We actually generate this YAML from DAL. DAL is a, another configuration language that allows us to remove all these boilerplates. So we have really nice and convenient uh, infrastructure to add this um, rules easily and to generate in the format suitable for hlint. And the Relute has much more. So I covered one of the, my favorite features, but it has many more. For example, all uh, IO functions are lifted to Monad IO because as I mentioned previously, you are using Relute in applications 
uh, mostly. And applications, you have some custom monads. And uh, if you want to just print something to terminal, if you want to read files, you also need to lift this standard function from base to monad IO. And uh, it's not really convenient because you also need to import this function and you never know where this model is. I can't remember the name of this model. So we just provide more convenient utilities so you can write applications easier. We also have warnings on remaining undefined and trace in code. So while you're developing Haskell applications, it's okay to use undefined for holes to just type check on this part of the code or to use trace to see how your pure functions work. But these functions shouldn't be remaining in your production applications. So we warn in Relude that you left this uh, usages in your code. Uh, we also have some extra models in the Relude extra namespace. And this is the models with extra features. So they are not exported by default and uh, uh, maintaining standard library is difficult because uh, if every change is like breaking change. If you introduce a new, a new function into scope, every code will break. Well, every code which uses this function because you will have a conflict. And, uh, uh, but we really don't want to break a lot of code and not being able to experiment. So we have extra models, which allows us to introduce some features to understand what works better. And later we can introduce them. And uh, we have some more new combinators. Of course, we are not all, we are not only re-experts in stuff from base. We uh, write our own combinators that help you write easier and more readable code. And uh, Relude depends only on boot libraries, which means that uh, you don't uh, build a lot of dependencies when something is changes. Uh, all libraries are boot except the one. It's unordered containers, which has a hash map data type. But hash map is an basically essential data structure in programming, and you will have it in your code anyway in dependencies. So it's totally okay to depend on it. And we Relute is decoupled from the GHC version. So if something uh, is introduced new in base, you, in your code you will need to use uh, CPP. But we uh, do this inside Relute for things we can to provide a compatibility layer. So you don't need to worry about this too much. And in the future, using Relute will be even uh, better because there are several GHC proposals about uh, module system. And each of these proposals has a feature which allows you to re-export entire namespaces. So if one of them gets, gets accepted and implemented, it will be possible to use all functions to work with map, sets, hash map, text, and by string without even adding new dependencies or adding new imports. It will be much easier and more convenient, which is also nice. And uh, now let's talk about how you can replace the standard library with uh, an alternative library. Because, well, we have this Relude alternative library, how we actually can use it instead of base. Uh, the first way, which is the uh, uh, old way, uh, is the most oldest, is by using uh, no implicit prelude language extension. So how it works, you add this language pragma at the top of your module, you import uh, the main module manually, and uh, then in each module, of, you import the prelude in each module of your Haskell project, and then uh, you can use all functions from this uh, alternative prelude. So it's really easy, it, this way existed uh, since forever, but it has some drawbacks. Uh, the good things about this way is that it's an explicit annotation in each module. So if you come to a code base, you will see that this module uh, uses an alternative uh, prelude. And that this will be maybe really nice for beginners. And it's supported by the old tools. Again, it's, it's the oldest way to use uh, alternative preludes. It's uh, support, supported by build tools and ideas. But uh, the cons of this approach is that it's some boilerplate. In each module, you need to write these two lines. Well, you can write the language extension in default extensions in your Cabal file, but you still need to import uh, this main Prelude module each time. <clears throat> and it's also difficult to modify the Prelude because if you don't like something in the standard library, for example, like everything except one single function, it's not really easy to hide this function from the scope. You need to modify each module with hiding annotation in your import to not bring this function into the scope. 
it will be not pleasant. And again, you need to keep more things in mind. Every time you create a new Haskell module, you need to remember to write this uh, two lines or one line in your module. Otherwise, you will have some uh, weird error messages. It's like you need to keep more context in your head, and this might be not pleasant. Uh, a better way, or an alternative way for using uh, custom pollutes is so-called mixins feature. Uh, it's a feature of Cabal, and if to use this way, you need to write these two lines in your Cabal file. So you basically write that you have base without the prelude module, and you import some alternative prelude, a prelude uh, where you rename the main mo prelude module as prelude. And this uh, will replace the default prelude with your, so you only need to write two lines of code. And this is a nice way because uh, it's low boilerplate, you don't need to maintain it, and it's enabled automatically for each of your models. So you don't need to remember uh, to add these modules. But uh, it requires a more recent Cabal version for at least 2.2, because this feature haven't existed uh, every, every time. It was a relatively recent feature. Uh, the Stack Build tool has some problems with this feature. Uh, REPL doesn't smoothly work. Again, since it's a relatively new feature, all workflows are not smooth enough. And um, if you want to import some other modules from Relute, you need to do some extra work or you will get some error messages. Again, some things to keep in mind, but it's not a problem in using Relute. We documented all possible ways of using mixins, so you don't need to be master of this feature in Cabal. You can just refer to our documentation to see how it works. And this is usually the easiest way to replace uh, default prelude with some alternative. When I need to use uh, a prelude, I usually use this way, but it's not always suitable. Uh, and there is third way, which is for production applications. It's uh, using so-called base no prelude trick. So base no prelude is a Haskell library, which is like base, but without prelude. It has everything uh, that the base have, the same versioning policy, all of the same modules, except prelude. So how you can use this trick, you need to debate, you need to add base no prelude to your dependencies instead of base, and you have to create prelude module. Since prelude module should exist in Haskell library, you need to create it manually. And if you want to replace prelude with prelude, you can create the, this simple two-line uh, prelude module. So you just uh, import prelude and you re-export the whole model. And this is how you can uh, create, um, uh, how you can replace default prelude with base no prelude. And this way of using prelude has advantages that, that is also enabled automatically and you can tune your prelude per application or stanza. Since it's your model, you can customize it what you want. You can hide things easily from uh, uh, alternative prelude, and you can uh, bring your new things into scope to tune for your needs of your application. But the disadvantages of this approach is that this library is not on stackage. You need to do extra stuff to use it. It's an extra dependency still, so uh, it's another liability. And there is this little peculiarity between exposed and other modules. So you have your prelude module and you can put it either in exposed modules in your Cabal file or in other modules and you will have different behavior. So you need to choose for your use case how you want to do this, just thing you need to do. And uh, one example of uh, custom prelude module is, uh, you can see on the slide, you import prelude, you import some extra function, you import uh, from JSON and to JSON type classes from the ASON library for parsing, because these names are unambiguous, you will use them almost in every module where you have data types, and it's good to save a few keystrokes. And you can bring some uh, functions from servant to the types to also write endpoints easily if you have really a lot of them. So you can customize your application, and I would suggest to add things in custom prelude only if you use them in at least uh, half of your models in your application, or if they're really long, or if they're really unambiguous, so there's only one meaning for something to make your code beginner friendly, but uh, it's really nice and convenient. And uh, that's all. Thank you for listening to me. Cool. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Um, I guess we just go straight to questions. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. Um, anybody in the call with some questions? Feel free to ask them. If there are no questions, I think I, I th can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you ready? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a really beginner question. Um, Dmitry, you've said that uh, some of uh, the some of functions from Remote uh, have monad AO as a constraint. Um, uh, do you use a specialized pragma to specialize them for uh, IO monad, the default one? Uh, thanks for the question. Yes, we actually do use specialized pragma. So we want to provide a uh, more convenient interface, but if you use type classes in Haskell, they can re um, result in the less efficient code because of the way how type classes implement it. So actually each function which is uh, lifted to monad IO has uh, is accompanied by a specialized pragma. And in some places we add inline pragmas so you don't have any overhead. That's awesome. Thank you. Cool. Um, I have a quick question myself before I go to YouTube. Um, I just want you to clarify regarding the um, integration with stock. Like, is it possible to still use the mixing feature that you described, but it will be problematic? So you have to do extra work to get it to work with stock, or it's totally not like possible? Well, uh... Stack supports mixins feature. So uh, I'm using Relute in multiple projects and I'm usually built my libraries and applications with both Cabal and Stack. So Stack supports and it will work. Uh, to elaborate on a problem, the problem will be if you try to load your project with Stack REPL in GHCI and then you won't see functions from scope or probably you will even see errors. So this is the only problem. There is open issue in Stack I've opened can find the problem, but it doesn't have solutions at the moment, unfortunately. Oh, okay, cool. I'll quickly go to YouTube. I see some questions here, and I think they're also mostly related to uh, stock, because um, Mikhail has a question that says, would replacing prelude to relude work with stock? Like if you change it in packages.yaml, for example, like will that kind of trick work? Uh, yes, if you use HPack or packages.yaml, you also can use this mixins feature. It ha has a, some syntax, probably you can find documentation in HPack, but it will work. It's not uh, limited to Cabal. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if this is a question. Let's see, let me see. Um, Hanan wrote also, is there any intention to try to eventually have this as the default prelude? Or is it impossible because of the infinite backward compatibility? Mm. Do you have any opinion or response to that to to make this like the new prelude? Like, is that ever going to happen? Or yeah, what's the possibility? <laughs> well, uh, it's not a question to me. Uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it will be nice, of course, if prelude will be uh, default prelude. Uh, I will be happy, but uh, there are no such plans because uh, base is really old. Uh, it's not e really easy to change, but what will help if more people will use Relute, it will find, uh, they will provide more feedback and they will share. And I noticed uh, actually a few things. Some things are incrementally improving in base and uh, in Prelude. For example, the feature with warnings for undefined and trace, there is issue to bring this feature also to base and to Prelude as there is discussion and uh, things sometimes are getting moved from Prelude to base and it will be nice if this will be become, but there is no such plan at the moment. Cool, thank you. Um, no worries. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, because um, I don't see any other questions on YouTube. If not, then I guess we can um, call it a day.